Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, one I affectionately call Sultai Seafood. It's a Sultai colored ramp deck with Emergent Ultimatum as its payoff card, a 7 mana sorcery that lets us search our library for up to 3 monocolored cards with different names and exile them. An opponent chooses one of them, that gets shuffled back into our deck, and then we get to cast the other two spells for free without paying their mana costs, and then we have to exile the Emergent Ultimatum as well. So a very powerful card that can potentially give us an enormous advantage as long as we have the right monocolored cards to search up. At the same time, we're also a Shark Typhoon deck, since we have very few creatures in the deck, so we're casting a lot of expensive non-creature spells that will generate XX blue shark creature tokens with flying, where X is the spell's converted mana cost, and we can also decide to cycle the enchantment instead for X1 and a blue, making an XX blue shark creature token with flying while also drawing a card. And then some of the other powerful monocolored cards we can search up besides Shark Typhoon include Liliana Dreadhorde General, which gives us access to a nice removal effect with the minus four. And we also have Taste of Death, which makes each player sacrifice three creatures, as well as making three food tokens, which can give us some valuable life. So if we put Taste of Death and Liliana in the same pile of cards we search up with the ultimatum, no matter what, we're going to get a powerful edict effect. And then we also have a sweeper in the deck that we could search up, which is Extinction Event, which makes us choose odd or even and then exile each creature with converted mana cost of the chosen value. And of course, tokens have an even converted mana cost of zero, so those will get exiled as well if we choose even. So between the Extinction Event, the Liliana and the Taste of Death, we have access to plenty of removal if we need to clean up the board. And then some of the win conditions in the deck, besides Shark Typhoon, also include Kiora Best the Sea God, which will make an 8-8 Kraken token with Hexproof on the second chapter, taps down all the opponent's non-line permanents that won't untap during their next turn, and on the final chapter we gain control of target permanent and opponent controls, and we also get to untap it, so it can steal whatever the opponent's biggest threat is. And then the final addition in the expensive monocolored spells department is Plain White Celebration, which also has some nifty combos in this deck. So if we Emergent Ultimatum for Liliana Dreadhorde General, Kyurabas Sea God, and Plain White Celebration, our opponent basically can't give us Plain White Celebration and Liliana in the same pile. Otherwise, what happens is we can cast the Liliana and then cast Plain White Celebration proliferating four times, which will put our Liliana all the way up to 10 loyalty, where we can ultimate with a minus nine right away and still have a Liliana in play. And then of course, each opponent having to choose a permanent, take control of each permanent type and sacrifice the rest, often means we win the game as they'll be left with only one land and maybe one creature. So they can't really give us Liliana plus Plain White, but if they give us Plain White plus Kirab as a Sea God, what we can also do is proliferate on the Saga using Plain White Celebration, which means we can make the Kraken, tap all the opponent's creatures down and steal a permanent all in the same turn which is also very difficult to recover from. And at the same time, of course, we can maybe return some permanents from our graveyard, maybe get back a Shark Typhoon we've cycled, as well as maybe gaining some life or making some citizen tokens. So Plain White Celebration is still a reasonable card, even without all those proliferate combos. But of course, the fact that it does makes it even better in this deck. And then, of course, we've got our four copies of Emergent Ultimatum. So our deck does have a lot of expensive cards, which makes some of our opening hands a little awkward, but the entirety of the deck is dedicated to ramping in these expensive cards. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. We've got the full playset of our Boreal Grazer to put an extra land from our hand onto the battlefield. Also a nice O3 Reach creature to play defense. Then at two mana, you're not going to see any mana creatures. Instead, we have Wolf Willow Haven to enchant one of our lands to make additional green mana and Grow Spiral to put an extra land in play and drawing a card. And to make sure we have plenty of lands to put in play with Spiral and Grazer, we have a total of 28 lands in the deck, so we usually won't have any troubles hitting our land drops. Then at 4 mana we've got one copy of Eat to Extinction as well as another spot removal we can maybe get with our Emergent Ultimatum pile, and it's still a reasonable spell to play for 4 mana. We've got our two Extinction events, which is also very powerful against the Geruda decks, which only have even mana costs. So it can be a very effective card against the new Companion decks. And then we have six 4-mana ramp cards, two Roots and four Migration Paths, which we can also cycle for two mana to search up two basic lands and put them on the battlefield tapped. And we've got a total of 12 basic lands to search up with our Roots and Migration Path, so we never risk running out, as well as, of course, four copies of Fabled Passage to search up our basic lands. 
and then we've got uh, four triomes which we can also cycle if we're flooding out for breeding pool and for overgrown tomb so the mana base is quite smooth with all these basic lands coming into play untapped but we also avoid playing double blue and double black spells early on which also makes it easier to make this mana base work so that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does all right we're on the play and uh, yeah this sounds acceptable the second grazer not super useful but uh, hopefully we'll still be able to ramp into ultimatum. Could definitely make use of one of those four mana ramp cards here. So for now, can go Haven into Grazer. And then next turn on upkeep we can fetch with the passage if we want to. Opponent on a mill deck. Get that islands. Taste of death not too useful right now. Alright, so waiting for our next uh, ramp spell to make sure we can cast ultimatum. One land away from casting a Liliana. All their opponent could be keeping up some counter spells by now. Secret Keeper's gonna mill us, and Secrets for two as well. And yeah, if they mill all the win conditions, then the ultimatum becomes a lot weaker. Their opponent is tapped out now. And we get to sneak this Liliana into play. Runaway together, bouncing Secret Keeper. It's like we're back in Throne of Eldraine Limited here. Alright, so we get to cast our ultimatum and see what's left. So Curabas is Sea God, Plain White Celebration, Shark Typhoon, seems good. They can give us Celebration, otherwise we ultimate Liliana. So we're gonna get Curabas is Sea God and Shark Typhoon. Now sadly, we'd never get to make the Shark Token from Shark Typhoon when we cast it off Ultimatum. Even if we uh, make sure it resolves first. Alright, our opponent did give us Plain White Celebration, so... Let's uh, proliferate a bunch of times and maybe get back a uh, Shark Typhoon as well. Or maybe a Curabus, a Sea God. Both work. And then cast Typhoon. And as you see here, even though we cast the Typhoon first, it doesn't actually make the Shark Token. And we can ultimate Liliana. Opponent does get to keep their secrets and a land. But uh, yeah, good luck beating uh, Kyrabas the Sea God with one land. We've got uh, plenty of cards remaining still. And now we get to make a giant shark as well as a kraken. Alright, and then next turn we get to steal their land as well if we want to. Let's make a wolf. Yep, 
11 cards left. They got pretty close, all things considered. I guess this works too. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, reasonable hands. Facing a Giruda deck, so... This is where Extinction Events definitely has its time to shine. Alright, looks like we're gonna get to cast Migration Path next turn. I guess we need to hit a land here into draw steps, but shouldn't be too much of a problem. So, guess we get Forest Swamp, and then the Haven will make triple green for Ultimatum if we draw it. It is tempting to just Taste of Death here and get rid of their two mana creatures. Yeah, sure. Casting Shark Typhoon and then Taste of Death doesn't accomplish a whole lot since we would have to sacrifice a shark token. The Jurida decks also often play Wolf Willow Haven, so stealing a land enchanted by Haven with the third chapter is also a common play pattern. Alright, so we won't be able to keep them off casting Jeruda next turn. So I guess we want to Haven into Typhoon, so we have the mana for Ultimatum if we draw it. And then next turn we can uh, bust the Sea God. Luckily, no creatures they can hit from my deck with Jiruda. And what our opponent hits, Umori. Naming creature, I'm sure. Let's uh, fetch up a forest. They do have a Thassa to flicker Jeruda. Maybe keep our shark tap down. Ooh, they hit a Dream Trawler. That's a good one. Hello there, Extinction Events. Nice of you to show up. Opponent is gonna tap down a shark. I'll hit for eight. And then probably just wipe the boards. I could wait until next turn, I guess, and then steal one of their things, but it's just gonna get removed by the extinction event. I guess I could steal Thassa. And then it would no longer be a creature, and then I can Extinction Events. But Athasa on my end of the battlefield doesn't do a whole lot. I guess I can tap stuff down. The upside of casting Extinction Event now is that if I draw an expensive spell, I get to make a shark and then maybe attack with it the following turn. But I guess I'm not in a hurry here, since technically they would just die to the Kraken if they don't have anything. So let's pass. Can sack a bunch of food tokens. They do get to flicker Giruda. Did they hit anything? 
another Umori. But they kept a tapped one. That's gonna cost them pretty severely here. Now I get to steal their untapped Jiruda and attack for lethal. Yeah, if they kept Umori untapped, then uh, we would have been uh, forced to maybe cast the extinction events. Can tap down a shark, but the Kraken has X proof. Desperation Growth Spiral. And it's gonna be Kraken for lethal. Sweet. Even if uh, they didn't mess up here, the extinction event would have been pretty effective. And then sooner or later, the Shark Typhoon would take over the game. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a decent looking hand. Turn two Grazer, hopefully turn three Migration Path. Deck is definitely capable of casting turn four Ultimatum. So this is maybe a green-white uh, hexproof aura deck, which has a hard time beating Extinction Event, Taste of Death, and Liliana. So those are all pretty valuable cards. So I could cast Extinction Events, naming uh, Even here if I wanted to, but I think I'd rather just Migration Path so we can cast our Ultimatum next turn. Get a forest and an island. The trio makes it pretty trivial to have the right colors for our emergent ultimatum. Needs three green mana, which is the primary color in the deck. Probably jumping since we're likely gonna make each player sacrifice a bunch of creatures anyway. Archon of Sun's Grace. All right, so let's see what we want to get here. My guess is Liliana, Taste of Death, Shark Typhoon. Because getting a cure up as a Sea Gods may not be the best when uh, we're going to sacrifice our own creatures. And getting Plain White is probably not going to work since they're probably not giving me Liliana anyway. So this way I get Shark Typhoon and the uh, Taste of Death. And then next turn we get to play Kerbas the Sea God, make a 7-7 seven, seven Shark and an 8-8 eight, eight Octopus. Interesting, they gave me Liliana. Well, I don't have to uh, minus Liliana, I can just start plussing. That's why it's a good combo with Taste of Death as well. And yeah, put on packs it in, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Don't love this hand, two grazers with only two lands and then a couple too many expensive cards. This is better. So what am I keeping here? Spiral combo as well with the passage to ensure that it can uh, fetch untapped. So maybe I prefer it over Haven, even though it requires me to hit a land and then keep Taste of Death as a payoff card here. All right, so we should be able to cast turn uh, three Migration Path. And now we're technically capable of casting Ultimatum on turn four. Facing a Kahira deck, maybe 
team or elementals with Kahira. Yep, there we see the Leafkind roots. Swamp and Islands. Alright, so we just need some payoff cards here. Omnath shows up, so... Taste of Death is looking pretty enticing. So I can even cast one of my Ram spells first. Let's go with the uh, Spiral, I guess. Back up Omnath. Sadly, Root I can't cycle, unlike the Migration Path, but I can still thin out the deck with it. And then I guess I'll sack a food token. Sure, I'll play the Grazer. Ooh, Yarok shows up too. I'm gonna need a good top deck here. Cycle Migration Path. Grazer, not so much. Could make a token with the Haven, I guess so. Draws two cards. Gotta stop this value engine from taking over. Extinction event, not the best since they have an even and odd uh, creature in play. Neoform to get a Risen Reef, which is gonna provide a ton of value. Yeah, we had a nice ramp start, but uh, didn't quite get the uh, payoff yet. And our opponent's definitely running away with this one. So even if we do find an ultimatum here, I'm not even sure if it's quite enough. And just an overgrown tomb. Uh, yeah, I think we're pretty much dead here, even if we game three life. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing an Obosh deck. And uh, we've got a reasonable opening hand, a little bit land light, but we've got plenty of ramp. So just need to hit a land or two.
turn one Falmar Knights. A land is good. So I can go Haven into Grow Spiral. And then next turn cast Migration Path. And then it's gonna be a turn... what is it? Is it still turn four? Take one. So we've got double black, so we'll get double blue. We've got plenty of green, so it doesn't matter too much what else I get. Don't think there's any discard I need to be aware of. Alright, so what are we searching up here? We drew the plain white, so can't search that up anymore, but I'm still happy getting a Liliana. To then maybe just cast a plain white next turn. So how about Kiora, Shark Typhoon, Liliana? Seems reasonable. Extinction Vent also pretty strong here, of course. So that's another option. But Shark Typhoon's more fun. Maybe instead of getting Kyurabas a Sea God, I could have gotten Extinction Events. But we do get to keep Liliana and Shark Typhoon. So it doesn't matter which order I click here, we're not gonna get our Shark Token. But next turn we will. Opponent could have Murder Strider to kill Liliana, which is why they gave it. Let us march into battle and make new comrades. In which case I won't be able to pull off the Wombo Combo. Rise. <laughs> Midnight Reaper instead. Alright, so should be able to ultimate Liliana next turn. Ah, our opponent conceded already. Didn't even see the plain white celebration. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. No real payoff card yet. But plenty of ramp for now. Opponent on a self mill deck, maybe an Arclight Phoenix deck with a Song of Creation, is my guess. There's our payoff card. So. Let's see, I need black mana mostly. And then we're on track to cast our turn 4 ultimatum. And yeah, there's a Song of Creation. Let's see what they discard to hand size here. Interesting, they're casting the Secret Keeper now. And add an Uro to discard, so this is the Breach version of Song of Creation. Alright, pretty familiar with that one. So, what do we want to get? 
could go for Liliana plain white and then get a Kyrabas Sea God. They might be happy being left with a land and a song of creation, but I doubt it. And otherwise I get to steal their song of creation, which sounds pretty fun too. Alright, we get to have a Liliana and a Kyrabas Sea God, which is pretty decent too. Just gonna take a little bit longer to steal their Song of Creation. So how many cards do they have left? 34. So they might have one Underworld Breach and, let's say, two Thassa's Oracles as win conditions. Can Extinction Event naming Odds, which takes care of the Secret Keepers. Also technically takes care of Uro, but that's not gonna stay in play here. Alright, our opponent's done for the turn. Discards the Thassa's Oracle, so they have one Breach and one Oracle left. Let's get in for 10. I guess we'll Spiral first here, see what we hit. Yeah, they're gonna have a hard time completely going off this turn. Technically not impossible. They might be looking for another Song of Creation, so that if I steal one of them, they still have one left. Rose Thorn, another creature that dies to my extinction on odd. Could have a Brazen Borrower to bounce Liliana. Or Curabas the Sea God. This looks like an Uro Escape, which also plays into our extinction event game plan. I maybe regret not making a Wolf Token, because now I'm gonna be too damage short of actually killing them next turn. Alright, they do have the Brazen Borrowers, so that happens. I guess I'll make a wolf now. Alright, opponent's got 18 cards remaining, a draw step, Uro to escape, and a brazen borrower in exile. A lucky clover, sure. Not getting to steal the Song of Creation definitely uh, gives him a chance here. Bounce Liliana and a token. Fourteen cards left. Yeah. How many win conditions? 
They still have a Breach and an Oracle. So maybe mana could be the restriction if they don't draw into it right away. Eleven cards remaining. It's getting close. Spiral. Four mana, eight cards. Yeah, we could be dead. Lucky Clover, draw two. Thassa's Oracle would be one devotion short of winning. Because it would draw two, four cards, three devotion. So that's not it, and they don't have the mana to Underworld Breach for Oracle. Ooh, Acolyte, that might do it. Acolyte into Thassa's Oracle. Alright, yeah. If I made an extra wolf token uh, last turn, we could have maybe killed him. So unless the Thassa's Oracle is their bottom card here, I think we're dead. Maybe they found an Underworld Breach instead of an Oracle. And yeah, they have to cast Clover, because yeah, if they cast Breach, they would go down to two cards, and an Oracle would, I guess, still do it, so it must not have been a Breach. Because yeah, they would have ended up with exactly zero cards, which still would have been enough. And our opponent fizzled out and concedes, so they must have gotten pretty unlucky near the end not to hit Underworld Breach or Oracle sooner, but I'll take it. Alright, so that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.